Uh, you saw him yesterday as the Bears are playing the Texans, and you got Andre Johnson, the, the, the greatest, the greatest Texan of all time, one of the greatest Miami Hurricane receivers of all time. But Devin Hester, who also played at the U, uh, University of Miami, where would he be without that mm-hmm. kickoff return? You talk about that kickoff return to start a Super Bowl yeah. against the Indianapolis Colts. So the kickoff return game, you got to have it in there. I'm glad they kept it. I'm eager to see how this plays out there. But we got football back, although we didn't see Caleb Williams play. We didn't see C.J. Stroud play. No starters whatsoever. So we're going to have to wait on that. And I would like to see a few snaps just like Troy Aikman, but more so for 49er fans. Our very own Patrick Willis is going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Patrick Willis, the 2007 NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year. First-round pick back in 2007, 11th overall. It basically took the starting job right in that preseason as a rookie and became a leader for this football team. Now, it's kind of – it feels like a Gale Sayers type of induction, right? Gale Sayers, a Kansas Comet with the Chicago Bears, had a short-lived career, seven, eight years. But he was so dynamic, he got inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Terrell Davis had really three to four monster seasons with the Denver Broncos, two Super Bowls, got inducted into, into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Patrick Willis, retired early, prematurely due to foot injuries. But boy, was he special. Uh, first team all pro, five time first team all pro, Patrick Willis, a second team all pro, a seven time pro bowler. You know, you think about solo tackles leader in 07 and 09. Uh, he was the leader, the 20, 2010s All-Decade Team, Buckus, Buckus Award, All-Rookie Team, 49ers uh, Hall of Famer. And what he did, what he embodied during that run, there was a lot of losing seasons, a lot of dark years, where there was Mike Nolan, where there was Mike Singletary. But you know what? They identified this guy at the Senior Bowl, and despite the losing, he never took a play off. He gave the Niners everything he had, everything. Um, Sideline to sideline, three down linebacker, basically rewrote the position. And then later on comes Navarro Bowman, and they form one of the best tandems we've seen in 49ers football history. So you think about his story, his story growing up with all the siblings. And, and, you know, at the age of 10, he's working full-time in cotton fields, Lutman, working full-time in cotton fields. You talk about all the – the poverty he had to endure as a young man. And then to go to Ole Miss, plays with a broken hand at Ole Miss, gets drafted by the Niners, and he's going to get his due tomorrow. So shout out to Patrick Willis. And, you know, I was thinking of seeing Patrick Willis yesterday, Loveman. It got me thinking about Fred Warner. Fred Warner has yet to miss a game with the 49ers. And I never thought, Shasky always says it, I never thought we'd see anybody close to Patrick Willis in a 49er uniform. And along comes this guy from BYU wearing number 48, who was a hybrid safety at BYU. And you look at what he's doing with the 49ers now at number 54. And he's considered the best linebacker in football. So, you know, when you think about Patrick Willis, I think about Fred Warner. And one day maybe he's going into Canton, Ohio, into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But hit me with the highlight. One of my favorite highlights of Patrick Willis. This was in week two in Seattle. What was it? 07, oh, no, excuse me. I think it was 08, 09. Against Seattle, Niners down 2013. Joe Hawks is in the building. He remembers this play. Go ahead and hit me with the love. Center, going to throw. Has time. Goes for the end zone. Ball deflected. Niners pick it up off the deflection. Patrick Willis back up the right sideline. Beats one man. Gets by Hasselbeck. Needs a block. He's down to the 40. The 35. Can he run fast enough? 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, 49ers. Oh, what a bonanza. 85 yards. Deflected. Interception. Touchdown for Patrick Willis. Joe Stark, you the call. That was his second NFL season. 86-yard Pick six to help the Niners win that win that football game, and he was named uh, to the Pro Bowl that season. And he established himself right then and there as one of the best linebackers in football. The speed, the physicality. We think about the hit on Brad Smith against the New York Jets. The hit on Reggie Bush on Monday Night Football against the Saints on Jerry Rice Day, Jerry Rice Night. This guy had everything, Sam Lubman. So he gets his due tomorrow. I think 49er fans should be excited that Patrick Willis is finally inducted or is inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, you're speaking of that hit on Brad Smith. Just listen to how that sounded. Look out, Brad Smith. My goodness. I'm not sure about this one. Somehow he gets to his feet. That was Patrick Willis who hit him high. Michael Lewis had him down low. I love it. Just those, those replays where you just you hear the collision. I mean, just... 
good. Well, it's like that, you know, Benjamin run that we love to play where you just, yeah. you hear just the thud through the audio of it. And we talk about Patrick Willis, you know, it's, you kind of, you, you made that Gail Say- Sayers con for you there, Bonte. And yeah, it, I think that's a good one there because there was, he, there was a lot of emotions with a player like that. Cause when he came into this organization, it was a very dark time in Niners mm-hmm. history. And he was a, a shining light during that, that late two thousands when the Niners were, you know, not very good. Um, yeah. And what I really love about Patrick Wilson was he was, he was kind of like that next wave of just hard hitting, mm-hmm. crushing linebackers. And that's probably me and probably a lot of other people. That was my favorite thing to watch about him. Not just the way he was able to play sideline to sideline, not just the way he was able to gobble up tackles mm-hmm. left and right, because uh, he played on defenses where he kind of needed to be that do it all guy gobbling up tackles left and right. But being able to lay those heavy hits, play the game as hard as he did, be available as much as he was. I mean, he missed the most games he ever missed in a season up until that last season. I mean, you had 16, 16, 16, 15, 13, yep. 16, 14. Then the foot injuries kind of take hold there in 2014 when the, mm-hmm. the Harbaugh era came to an end. But he was one of those guys. When you talk about just like guys, you're just you're kind of heartbroken for that they didn't get that yeah. ultimate champion, that ultimate yeah. prize of that championship. There's mm-hmm. a lot of guys on those Niner teams who... You know, him, Frank Gore, Navarro Bowman, uh, I think it's Justin Smith, who, yeah. among others, who were not, they were on some of those bad Niner teams, but then they were on those really good Harbaugh nope. teams. And you really want to see guys like that who went through those down times, who went through those yep. lean years, how bad it was, that 0-5 yep. start under Mike Singletary that yep. ultimately kind of led to him getting, you know, they moved off getting of him fired, there. Yeah. Um, like, to see him kind of make it to that Super Bowl there against the Ravens, you want like you well, get, you love to see guys like that get rewarded for what they put into their career, and it felt like that would have been just such a perfect way to just encapsulate. It was yep. such an incredible career for Patrick Willis. Yep. Um, very happy that he's getting his due because he is absolutely top of the list of guys who should be wearing that gold jacket for the rest of his you, life. You know, one of my favorite memories is not even a play with Patrick Willis. It's after the NFC Championship game against Atlanta where they're down seventeen nothing. And Patrick Willis is getting interviewed after the game. And Frank Gore comes up from behind him. P. Willie, Patrick, we go into the Super Joe knows what I'm talking about. And they embrace with this hug. And I remember that hug at the time where they're hugging each other. You know, obviously Frank Gore was here during those dark days. And he's the leader on offense when you got nobody around him. And you got Patrick Willis. And they embrace mid-interview on Fox. And I started shedding tears. I I swear to God, I started shedding tears because Frank Gore is one of my favorite players of all time, one of my favorite 49ers of all time, and hopefully he gets his due soon. And it's good to see Frank Gore still part of this organization. By the way, Frank Gore going to be inducted into the 49ers Hall of Fame Monday Night Football against the New York Jets September 11th in week number one. But that embrace right there, those guys hugged, and you could just feel it like we, we got there. We got there despite all the dark days, despite all the coaching changes, despite all the deep different uh, coordinators. We come back from 17 nothing in the Georgia Dome, and we get there a year after the heartbreak against the New York Giants at Candlestick Park. So that moment, not even a play, just seeing those two gladiators, those two leaders embracing the way they did to get to that mountaintop. I know they didn't win that Super Bowl against the Baltimore Ravens, but that moment right there when they hugged and embraced and Gore's like, we go into the Super Bowl. We go into the Super Bowl. And Willie and Patrick Willis had that all shucks kind of chuckle like, I know, man, I know. And you think about him before games, pumping guys up. We got to have it. We got to have it. Patrick Willis is, I hope nobody forgets him. And I'm glad that the NFL didn't forget him. And he finally got his bus. He's going in, 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 into the Hall of Fame alongside uh, Jabril, who is it? Uh, Julius Peppers, Andre Johnson, Devin Hester. Steve McMichael. I mean, this is legendary stuff. Dwight Freeney as well with the Indianapolis Colts. So I love it. I love it that Patrick Willis is going to the Hall of Fame and hopefully a lot of 49ers. And Jim Harbaugh, by the way, Jim Harbaugh sent it everybody. The Chargers brass, when they've got Goldstein, they've got Bowman, they've got a bunch of guys here with the Chargers who are part of those 49er teams. They're taking a flight to Canton, Ohio to go see Patrick Willis and to go be there for the speech. So shout out to Patrick Willis, 888-957-9570. If you have any memories of Patrick Willis, how excited are you to see Patrick Willis get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? He's not going to be the only one from that era, that era either, Lubman. It's going to be Joe Staley one day. Hopefully mm-hmm. it will be Frank Gore. Well, Frank Gore, I mean, that's got to be first ballot, right? I mean. I don't know. Because I- as good as Frank Gore was, 
Was he ever considered the best running back in football? Well, he was one of those guys, I think, and just a lot of his best years came on not great Niners teams. You know, same with Patrick Willis. Some of his best years came, you know, before uh, Mm -hmm. that Jim Harbaugh era. And I think that's kind of what made that run so emotional, that hug so emotional is guys like Willis, guys like Gore, you know, they were there for the downtimes. They saw, you know, the bad years, the coaching changes, Mm -hmm. you know, how bad it could get for a franchise that's lost its way. And much like you, Bonte, much like all the other Niner fans out there, you know, they went from the bottom, you know, literally they'll start from the bottom. Now we're here. They kind of, the fans kind of went on that journey with guys like that. Whereas, Mm -hmm. you know, this, this current uh, core of Niners players, it feel like there, there is a very strong emotional connection between this fan base and this team. But so many of these guys really didn't start coming along until kind of 2019. So they've always kind of been here during a successful era. I mean, there's guys, you know, like George Kittle who, you know, or or Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw. They were kind of here during the lean years. I think Greenlaw, Mm -hmm. what his first year is 2019, right? Greenlaw. 2019. Yeah. So, but like Warner, Kittle, they're kind of like the older guard there. They were there during some of the bad years, but not in the way that guys like uh, Willis or guys like Gore were. Right. Um, and I think that's what made that run so special. I think yep. was that, you know, it was, yeah, it was, th- these were guys that were there when it was bad going on that journey with this fan base. There's a stronger connection there. That's just, it's, it's really hard to quantify. Yeah. And when you do see them embrace on the Super Bowl, you know, we're going to the Super Bowl. Right. And that was Super Bowl again. They were down 17, nothing. It was kind of encompasses uh, or, or, or even kind of you know, represents the, the journey that well, they were on, you know, being down, coming back, getting to the top, it just it really shows how much that era can connect uh, emotionally to a fan base. You, you know, you think about 07, they're 5 and 11. 08, they're 7 and 9. 09, they go 8 and 8. We're thinking, boy, huh? okay, maybe they could get over that hump. And then they go 6 and 10. And they hadn't yet sniffed the playoff berth. And Harbaugh comes in in 2011. And it's one of the more memorable seasons in 49ers history, especially without the championship. We know how it ended against the New York Giants. But 2011, where their their first taste of playoff success, their first taste of postseason football. And then you get to Harbaugh years, of course, 2012, 2013, and then 2014. It ends drastically there at 8 8. Everybody's fired. Everybody's going on and moving on to the inner careers there. So to see them get over the hump and go through all these coaches and coordinators, you know, Nolan, Singletary, Tom Sula, you got different, different offensive coordinators, and the stability that Harbaugh brought to the organization during that tenure. It helped guys like Patrick Willis, and they finally got their due nationally. Now, Patrick Willis was a household name uh, despite all the losing. Obviously, when you make all pro teams and you're hitting people like Brad Smith and you're taking interceptions back 86 yards and you're leading the league in tackles, people are like, man, that number 52 is pretty special. But then when you start winning games and you're on primetime football, then all of a sudden the casual fan was like, whoa, who's that 52 in red and gold? Who is that dude? Well, now he's a Hall of Famer. So congrats to Patrick Willis as we shout out our friends at Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call it to the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Flowing Water Plumbing and Drain. We got a fun show today. Cam Mimmon. Cam Mimmon will join us at 8 o'clock on the River Islands guest slide to talk about Patrick Willis. He covered his entire career. Um, He knows Patrick Willis inside and out. I wonder if Cam is going to go to Canton, Ohio. He may be flying out to Canton, Ohio. We'll see about that. He also has a new book out that we'll touch on. And then Doug Hendrickson, all-time agent, uh, beast mode. He's got a new podcast. He's going to join us. We're going to talk about everything with Doug Hendrickson because he knows about holdouts, um, training camps, the NFL, the 49ers. Uh, He's going to talk about all that at 920 today on the morning roast. Plus, we got shameless shout-outs at 745. I want to hear everybody. Shout, shout out whoever. It's summertime, man. Shout out to your wife. Yesterday was National Girlfriend Day. You want to shout out your girlfriend? Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, Go oh. figure it. I mean, they got, they got a, something every day. That's a big swing and a miss for your boy there. Well, I mean, when the hell did National Girlfriend Day become a thing? Well, is know, it every day National Girlfriend Day? That is true. You know, she ah. didn't text me about it, so as far as I'm concerned, I got away with that one. <laughs> oh, 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 she didn't text you about it. Well, you might be in some trouble, buddy. <laughs> you, 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 you Maybe I'll have to make up for it this weekend. You, you, better, be doing, you, better, you better get on the phone right now, buddy. Get on the phone right now. Um, so National Girlfriend Day was yesterday. If you want to shout out your girlfriend, shout out Shasky for getting that bump removed from his head. A terrible bump. My guy was loopy yesterday, man. He was all over the place. Loopier um, than usual. What'd, what'd you say? Loopier than usual. You, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, shout out whoever you want to shout out. Your summer vacation home. That's coming up at 745. We got caller of the week. We got a lot going on here on the morning roast. And that's all coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Celebrating 60 years of full service baking. With no compromises. You got that?